Welcome back to the World Economic Forum here in Davos, Switzerland. You are in the HuffPost Live Broadcast Center, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Chad Griffin, president of the Human Rights Campaign. Uh, Chad, Thank it's you. been a short trip for you, but a very productive trip. This morning, there was a panel hosted by uh, Fareed Zakaria, you know, partly sponsored by you know, HuffPost and, and Microsoft. But the real amazing thing about this panel was the diversity. Tell us a little bit about what happened this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had an incredible audience here this morning of business leaders, world leaders um, from around the globe um, that were exposed to three activists, one from Cameroon, one from Jamaica, and one from Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we focus on is while much of, um, particularly in the United States and parts of Europe, have really moved forward and moved forward on marriage equality and non-discrimination protections. Um, very quickly, too. Still, like, very quickly. Still a long ways to go. Of course. Um, and we obviously remain committed uh, to bring full equality to all 50 states uh, in, in, in America. Um, but at the same time, we have a responsibility uh, to look out for our brothers and sisters uh, who are being discriminated against, and in many cases, their lives threatened around the world. So while we've moved forward in America, many countries uh, have moved backwards. Right. Um, and so we introduced these activists to, uh, on a global stage this morning. Uh, and then we did a second panel that was um, Paul Singer and right. Dan Loeb, two great philanthropists that have actually helped us launch our global program uh, at HRC. So it's an incredible morning. And you know, we're obviously here at a global event, your global program. It seems as though when it comes to gay rights or rights for you know, the LGBT community, this is really increasingly becoming a global conversation because of, you know, by virtue of the internet, the way people are connected, activists and people who are trying to advocate for these rights. Um, but with that, and with the internet, you know, so many people we've been talking to here are commenting about how Davos used to be more insulated, you know, mm -hmm. more exclusive. Obviously, it is framed as the elite. Um, but now everyone has Twitter, and even the people who attend use Twitter and are trying to, you know, share their experience. And there was uh, a photograph that has kind of sparked some controversy, uh, rightfully so, that was tweeted by Goldie Hahn. Uh, in fact, I think we can pull it up. Um, so there it is. And, uh, you know, this was her saying that she met the Nigerian president, good luck Jonathan, and you know, she, I think, deleted the tweet. It sparked some controversy. Of course, the real story is why it sparked some controversy given um, his record on, and I should probably say his, his worsening record on yeah. humans. I mean, what do you make of the story, and more importantly, the trend uh, in, in Africa and yeah. in Nigeria, Uganda, as you know? Yeah, let me first um, just say that President Jonathan of Nigeria is um, one of the most dangerous uh, anti-LGBT uh, world leaders that we have on the stage today. Um, as you mentioned, he also happens to be here at Davos. And yeah. we have encouraged all who come into contact with him uh, and journalists who are interviewing him to challenge him right. um, on this, this dangerous law that he just signed. Um, what the law actually does for a person uh, that is accused of being LGBT, uh, it is illegal. Um, and one can be imprisoned for up to 14 years. Mm -hmm. In addition, they made it illegal to be even a member. So a straight person who's a member of a human rights organization advocating on behalf gay of associations. Ga gay associations. Um, so a straight person that would be a member of an organization like the Human Rights Campaign mm -hmm. could be jailed for up to 10 years. Right. Uh, it's terrible, and they've arrested a number of gay people. And as you mentioned this morning, um, Goldie Hawn um, was clearly unaware, like many people around the world, on just how terrible uh, President Jonathan is and the consequences um, of, of what he's done in that piece of legislation. Um, I was able to speak to her right after that and explain uh, that law and what he has done. Uh, she has apologized and talked about um, how sorry she is for having made that a mistake. I should also say Goldie Hawn has been a true leader on LGBT rights for a very long time. Uh, so she made a mistake, uh, she has corrected it, and yeah. um, we're working with her to ensure that folks around the globe know uh, just how terrible he is and hope that his mind can be changed. And in a sense, there is a silver lining here, uh, you know, because uh, of her celebrity, because of her support for the community for so long, and the fact that she now has apologized, and, and not just that, but that this conversation can be had and perhaps there can be more awareness about leaders like Good Luck Jonathan um, who are, you know, pushing these kinds of legislations. Because, as you must know, in Uganda, you know, very recently, and, and to this kind of point of uh, also being penalized or being imprisoned if you are part of a gay association, yeah. extending it by association in Uganda, there was a bill passed uh, by lawmakers that could potentially jail someone for life uh, as we know in Nigeria, 
the law can be that you can be stoned to death. Right. Um, there was a man who was, uh, received 20 lashes, I believe, after an Islamic yeah. court in the north deemed that his sexual act had, had you know, happened in the past, and so they went easy on him. But what I'm getting at is the fact that you can be jailed, the law in Uganda, I think, stipulates for not reporting to authorities that someone is gay if you know that you're gay. Right, so a someone, family member right, or a friend. Right, if someone comes out yeah. within 24 hours, you can be imprisoned. Um, what is the real, I mean, it seems like an sim over, overly simplistic question, but what is the real worry there, the real trouble there? I mean, what's the worst part of it for you? Look, it, the implications of the law, the specific implications are terrible. The violence that it inspires is terrible because right. it focuses and puts a target um, on every LGBT person in, in each of these countries. Um, it also sends a terrible, terrible message to LGBT young people in all of these countries. Mm -hmm. Well, their, their government is calling them criminals because mm -hmm. of who they are, how they were born. Yeah. Um, so the world community has got to stand up. Right. And the re one of the reasons that the human rights campaign is making such a priority of this is because in almost all of these instances, yeah. there are Americans who are helping to lead, helping to fund, and in those countries supporting these laws and testifying on behalf of these laws, always using junk science uh, and phony credentials. What kind of Americans? What kind of groups? Um, groups like Brian Brown with the National Organization for Marriage, for instance. He's been to Russia a number of times talking to Russian leaders uh, with messages about protecting their children. Right. Protecting children from what? Well, that is what the law is in Russia, as you know, with right. Sochi coming up. It's uh, not to uh, provide what they call gay propaganda right. or to <laughs> discuss right. that with children. And, you know, we've seen, obviously, President Putin come out and say, well, I have a gay friend in Elton John, and so therefore I cannot be prejudice or any of these things that people are calling him as a result of this law. I, what's worse, I just want to get your thoughts on this, is that this is a trend. I mean, India, the largest democracy in yes, the world, as you know. Another just, backward slide. Right, the Supreme Court just upheld, you know, a previous, you know, a law that criminalizes homosexual acts. Why do you think we're seeing this kind of disparity, this juxtaposition of like, you know, quick evolution, or not quick, I should say, progressive evolution on one side in the right. West, and then in other countries, the opposite. What do you make Look, of Look, I, I think in a lot of these countries, uh, it's an example of increased instability in these countries. Mm -hmm. um, you see these world leaders who decide to pick a particular minority and focus attention on them, mm -hmm. um, because it's still popular to do so, to attack LGBT people in that country, and in some cases, distract uh, from other problems that those world leaders mm -hmm. uh, have. But in, in all of those instances, as you mentioned, um, there, it is Americans that are partnered with folks on the ground in each of these places that are pushing forward. And what's happened is they're starting to run out of business in the United States. Someone right. like Brian Brown is today losing battle after battle right. after battle in the United States. So he's now taking his hate and exporting it to other countries like Russia. Right, and that can, you know, arguably be all the more dangerous. You know, we were talking about the group The Family in Uganda, yeah. and this has been chronicled now in films. And so at the very least, like the incident that happened here in Davos, I think it's an opportunity to have these conversations. Uh, I don't want to use, you know, I, I would not want to use the word shame, but a lot of people online are using this as an opportunity. No, I, I, I think it is shame and to isolate and for the world to know. Some of these leaders, I think, think that they can get away with it in their own country without yeah. being branded um, as a hateful, mm -hmm. um, shameful leader. But what you're starting to see now, particularly with, uh, with Twitter and mm -hmm. with all, uh, with social media, you can no longer do this in silence. Right. Um, and the world community is now unified. Right. Um, and increasingly, with what we did here this morning, the business community uh, is unified. And in many of these countries, uh, some of the, the biggest employers are multinational uh, corporations and having these business leaders stand up because right. this hurts the employees yeah. uh, of companies that are there as well. Well, you know, to your very point, the last thing I want to bring up is when you talk about employees, you know, obviously in America uh, there's been a lot of progress made and there's a lot of investment in same sex marriage. And of course, you know, with ENDA, the fact right. that there's still so many states, what, over 30 states, I think it is. Uh, you would know better. Perfectly you, legal to be fired for, for being LGBT. For being LGBT. Yeah. I mean, that I think also highlights still, to your point, how much work there needs to be done. Um, and, and, you know, I'm curious, uh, last but not least, being here at Davos, I know it's a quick turnaround for you, but, I mean, have, are you encouraged by, by kind of, you know, meeting the people that you're meeting here, and they're all from different backgrounds, from governments, from corporations? Because this, I would imagine, for you, is, is, a, is a struggle, is a fight that you need to have a broad coalition to really 
A really absolutely. Make. Look, it's the way we've had our successes in the United mm -hmm. States, by having Republicans and Democrats come together, business leaders joining with labor leaders mm -hmm. um, to bring about success, and that's how we're ultimately going to win on the global stage. Right. Even religious uh, leaders, maybe. Even religious leaders, absolutely, especially religious right. leaders, in fact, yeah. uh, that we have seen move on this. We've seen the Pope uh, be far right. more inclusive in the right. language coming out of the Catholic Church. Right. Um, so look, we are without question um, on a path to, to full equality and acceptance in the United States and ultimately around the globe. Yeah. We still have a long ways to go. And what we've started here at the World Economic Forum this morning, I think, was a, was a great start. Right. Um, I hope ultimately these discussions will be had on the main stage um, there, and, and I'm optimistic that we can do that as well in future years. Well, in due time. Well, congratulations for all the work you're doing for the Thank you. panel having gone well. And great to talk to you. Thank you for you. your attention. Great to meet you.